Hello and welcome back to this new video. In this video I'm going to show you how to modify rigs imported from games. Let me show you what I'm talking about with the worst example I can find, which is Overwatch skins. As you can see, Overwatch models aren't great when you import them. Now this video is going to be mainly about Overwatch, but it can apply to other games such as Fortnite, Apex Legends, Valorant, etc. So let's fix what we have here. Basically when you import your Overwatch model, you have a, your armchair right there. That's an easy fix. Just go into edit mode. By pressing Control tab, you can easily go between pose mode and object mode. So by pressing Control tab, you can select everything and just move it a bit and then right click so you can like, so you can disregard the thing you just moved. So what we want to do is make these bones a little more readable. Make them so that we can easily see like, there's a bone spanning across here from to there. That's a bone that's supposed to be the upper arm. And then a bone from here to there that's supposed to be a lower arm, then the hand and then the fingers. And the same thing with the spine and the legs. Now, first off with Overwatch models there, as you can see, if you go into edit mode, there are a lot of bones that you can't see in pose mode. And that basically just means these bones here if you go into this bone section is that they have a custom color set which is apparently transparent now I, I can see how this is nice like you can hide the bones that are less important like for example this bone is more important than this bone here that moves the model in like a tweaky way like you use these bones to deform the model to specific needs but for us it's a bit icky because we have to we can't really see the bones and we can't really unhide them and we we're basically just better off putting them in a group so we can easily hide and unhide them so that's what we'll do uh, we'll select we'll delete all these unnecessary groups and we'll create our own. So basically what we're gonna do is when you have this bone here selected, uh, we go in here and we can see that this has a custom color and that color is also applied to a lot of other bones. So what we can do to select those other bones is press, like when you have the bone selected, press Shift G and then color. And now let's move these bones to a new collection that's going to be called Detailing. And what we can do now is select one of these bones here and just copy the colors over and that way we can unhide the bones but when we do still want to hide them we can turn off this bone collection and there they go now as you can see there are still a lot of bones that are hidden uh, that's because they're split up in different color sets so what we're gonna do is just select those bones like that press shift G color and move them to detailing again you can also just split these up in different groups if you want to but for now I'm just gonna put them on in one group now we're going to go into one of these bones and bonk, there we go. Now we have all of those set. Let's see if there are more bones that are hidden. And now we're left with all these little dots. So what we want to do to fix that is basically go into edit mode, select everything, make sure this is set to individual origins and just size them. Oh, let's deselect the root first and scale these up a bit like that, just so we can easily spot them. And now we're going to move the tips of the bones towards where they're supposed to be. What I mean by that is basically, uh, let's turn off the detailing for now so it's a bit easier to see. Now we want to get this bone to span across to this bone. And how we do that is grab the tail of this bone. There we go. Press Shift S and then cursor to select it. And now we can grab the head of this bone. Press Shift S and selection to cursor. Boom. Now we have a bone that's easy to read and rotate in, rotates in the right direction. Now it's important that you have the tip selected when you move it to another place. If you have the tail selected, you basically invert the bone. Let me show you what that means. So let's say you want to move this bone to what there. So we want to select this and press shift S, cursor to selected. And then we accidentally grab the tail instead of the head and then go shift S and then like that. Now what we've done is we've set the origin point of this bone there, which is something we typically don't want to do. <laughs> so yeah, always make sure you grab the tip and then press Shift S. As you can see, it rotates from here now. And now we basically want to do this entire process of grabbing tips and shoving them into heads and do it all over her body. So let's do that with the hands. And then I'll show you something you have to be careful about. Okay, first we want to make a collection for the main bones. And the main bones is what I consider is in here. 
So basically what we're going to do is select everything while you have detailing off and move it by pressing M to a new collection and call it main or something like that. Now we can turn this off as well. What we want to do now is select our or enable our detailing group and just kind of grab the hand or grab the main bones of the hand. So that's this one. I think this one, this one and that one and this, 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 this and that yes and then we move that to main because i consider the fingers and hand to be part of the main bone structure now we're going to turn off detailing again and we're going to do the same thing we did with the arm with the fingers so go into edit mode select tail shift s grab head shift s grab tail shift s grab head shift s grab tail and this one we just move like that and then maybe like that and then move it like that just so it looks good and now we're gonna run into a bit of a problem what i'm talking about is orientation issues when you move these bones like this they might not have a good orientation and what i mean by that is when you go into local here and select this bone you can see that the orientation of this bone is not great the finger doesn't really rotate the way it looks like it's supposed to and it's going it's getting even worse if you select this bone uh if you if you select the same axis it rotates a, no, a whole other way so when you select all of these bones and go like this ugh, that's not supposed to happen like that because typically when you select a finger like this and rotate it like this it creates like a fist if you do it with all fingers but this does not look like a fist at all so to make it a bit easier to understand we're gonna go down here and set our viewport display to octahedral octahedral yes yeah and then also enable our axes this way we can see our orientations visually and as you can see this orientation is pointing that way this orientation is pointing that way and this orientation is pointing that way and that's not what we want so how do we fix that we go into edit mode select our bone and in here we have uh, this roll thing and we want to make sure that our roll thing lines up with everything here now that sadly doesn't mean we can just go in here and select all of these and then just alt click and then press in like zero or something that sadly doesn't exactly work it, it's close but it doesn't exactly work so what we can do instead is just think of a normal orientation so let's just say x is up and z is sideways and we're gonna do that with all of these finger bones and then these ones and this one the hand bone as well so to do that basically just slide the roll a bit and then for this one as well make sure that x is up and z is sideways and then for this one as well there we go x is up z is sideways and now if you go into pose mode and select all of these and rotate them you can see that rotates perfectly fine all right that's basically it move the tips of the bones to the ends of the bones make sure your orientation is correct so with these two as well that looks good and maybe just move the ends of the tips a bit around a bit in the fingers like this to make sure that the orientation is correct from the start now let's do a quick time lapse to show you what an end result would look like And there we go. Sadly, with Overwatch models, you don't, you can't really enable symmetry, which is a big part of what you should do in other models. And why you can't do that with Overwatch models is because these bones are labeled with numbers, which is super weird and shouldn't be like this, but they are. So you can't really turn on symmetry and do this. And then the bone on the opposite side does that. Because as you can see here, these are numbered and they don't have like point L or underscore L to signify that this one is the right bone and this one is the left bone. And I know there are add-ons to make entire rigs for Overwatch models, but doing it like this keeps your options very open. And when you have like this rig, advanced rig, it's difficult to make your own edits and interpretations of things and basically learn. <laughs> Speaking of learning, if you want to know more about like rigging, let me know because I, gl I will gladly make more rigging videos. Anyway, it's been fun. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.